Welcome to the Kapow Radio Show, Biblio Studio. Yes, welcome. This is Miss Kapow, and today's date is August 6th, 2018. And we are, are doing a study in the second epistle of John. Man, I'm really impressed with your enthusiasm. Yes. My goodness. Did you have pancakes this morning? I did. Okay. Sunday that, pancakes. Okay, well, that's what I'm sensing in your voice. The happiness of pancake flowing. <laughs> yeah. I only had one. <laughs> I only had one. Yeah, it was a big one. It was like, what, 52 inches in <laughs> diameter? Uh-huh. No, it wasn't. You're funny. You're funny. To John, to John. Turn to the book of To John, To John. It's only 13 verses. Really? Mine has uh, 31. Okay. Well, you that's because you're using the... The Jesuit Bible. (laughs) Uh, 13 verses to John, and we'll get right on it. And he's going to uh, be talking about truth and love and uh, and explaining that and a warning against antichrist deceivers. Once again, a warning against losing rewards, things like that. Right? So, Ms. Capella, if you will read the entire 2 John All right. Then we'll break it down. All righty. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in their flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, to receive him not, into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that bideth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write them or write with paper and ink. But I trust to come unto you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. I'm sorry, I I usually put it up on my screen so it's mm. bigger font, but I was actually reading from my Bible. It's like Oh wow! Well, I should have put it on the. My goodness, well, I Utah. thought I thought you did a good job. Oh, thanks. I thought you did a good job. Okay, let's uh, unpack it. Number one, uh, we're dealing with the Apostle John. Still, this is uh, the second of three letters. We just got done finishing the first first letter. It's the second one. And uh, these are letters. They're letters that he wrote to specific churches. John, once again, is the elder in the sense that, um, well, who knows? I mean, he's probably an older guy by now, obviously. But he's also one of the first, uh, the witnesses. He's one of the 12 apostles, the 12 original disciples who the criteria was to actually be with Christ from the beginning, Hmm. from the beginning of his ministry. That was the criteria for selecting the 12, that 12 inner circle, okay? So this guy, once again, I keep saying, this guy has a lot, a lot of street cred. He's got a lot, a lot of credibility because he was actually walking and talking with God made flesh. He was actually walking and talking with the Logos, God's in intelligentsia in the flesh pretty heavy stuff and was witnessing uh, and a witness to his uh, suffering and his um, you know miracles ascension the whole bit plus John was part of that inner circle 
also. Mm-hmm. There, was a, there was a little inner circle there that John was a part of that, James, John, uh, and Peter. So pretty heavy guy. So when he writes stuff, it's pretty heavy. And sometimes he's a little hard to understand because he repeats and then he says something and then he then he clarifies it in the next verse. And um, sometimes it's kind of hard to get your head around it because you got to understand this guy has seen experienced things that you and I have no, uh, no idea uh, what that would be. We won't know until that day that we're actually with the Lord himself. Mm-hmm. So pretty heavy stuff. So um, I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of respect and, um, you know, love for, for the writings of John, including his gospel and the book of Revelation, because this guy is the real deal who was really there the whole time. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he starts off uh, the elder. He's talking about himself. He's the elder. He's been around a long time. Um, like I said, he's there from the beginning. So he's he calls himself the elder. And what's interesting, he doesn't use the more um, authoritative word apostle. Like, you know, I'm the apostle, blah, blah, blah. He calls mm-hmm. himself the elder. A lot like um, Peter did. First Peter five one, Peter says the elders which are among you exhort, right? And then he mm-hmm. says, "Whom am also an I I whom also am an elder." Mm-hmm. So Peter did the same kind. Of, it's kind of a more like, "Hey, you know, we're the veteranos," you know. So he doesn't. Yeah, we're the ones that came from the beginning. Yeah, so he's not really saying, "Hey, I'm, I'm an apostle. Listen to me." Blah, blah. Doesn't need to. Doesn't need to. So he's the elder unto the elect lady and her children. And there are some who believe, there are some scholars who believe that this was a real person, a real lady with real children in a house. I don't believe that. I believe with other scholars that this is a church mm-hmm. that he's addressing. And there's internal evidence for that. There's more in, eternal, eternal, internal evidence that he's addressing a church than there there would be if he was addressing an individual. Mm-hmm. In fact, if he was addressing an individual lady, we'd come across some problems later on when he's um, commanding, not commanding, but com- you know asking that there be love between him and the lady. Right? right. It, it'd be kind of um, uh, highly inappropriate for the Apostle John to be doing that to a. <laughs> for a female, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a church. So we'll get the other nonsense out of her head. This is a church. The elect lady is a church and her children are those people who are attending that called out one, that congregation of called out ones that are meeting together um, outside of the temple or the synagogue. It depends on what year this was written too. If it was written in the 90s, AD 90, like many believe, the temple's gone. The temple's been destroyed AD 70. There is no temple uh, anyway, mm-hmm. you know, or synagogue or anything like that. So it, it's a it's a church and the members of the church that he's addressing. And he calls them the elect lady uh, whom I uh, love, he says, who I love in, now this is interesting, in the truth, mm-hmm. not just who I love in truth, but who I love in the truth. Uh, that's, you know, pretty heavy. The truth. So there is an ultimate truth. And today we see a lot of, um, like on YouTube, a lot of truthers, the truth movement. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people, hey, we're a truther, we're telling the truth, truth TV, truth this, truth podcast, a lot of truth. But there's only one truth, the truth, mm-hmm. and that's the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the, the, the gospel of Christ. That's the only truth there is. The yeah, truth. The way, the truth, yeah. and the life. That's it. And so John is saying that, you know, to the elect lady and her children. And um, once again, just let me point out, uh, backtrack a little bit. I want to point out First Peter 5.13, where, where Peter uses the, almost the same language to address a church. He says, the church that is at Babylon, elected Mm -hmm. together with you, saluteth you. So it's that kind of language. So the elect lady and her children are a church whom John loves in the truth and not I only, but also all that have known the truth. Mm -hmm. Same. So for all 
Christians, all Messiah followers that have known the truth of Jesus Christ, we all love the elect lady and her children also. You love one another. You love the you love the the true called out ones, the true ecclesia, is what he's saying. So that all Christians form one fellowship and you rejoice in the spiritual prosperity of one another. Okay? That's the compute it's the communion of love. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. And then verse two, he says, For the truth, the the truth's sake which dwelleth in in us. Uh, what does that mean? That means the spirit of Christ, right? Mm-hmm. It's in us. It's Christ's promise that when he would leave, he would send us the Holy Spirit to guide us and comfort us, lead us to all truth. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. There's a heavy promise there in just a few words mm-hmm. in verse 2. So for the truth's sake is is joined with the verse above, I love, in John 1. I love in the truth for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. And he's saying they who love in the truth also love on account of the truth. Hmm. You get it? If you love in the truth, you love on account of the truth also. And John, if you notice, you know, as we've been we going through First John, John, I mean, he's he's talking about agape all the time, agape love all the time for the brethren, because that was a commandment. It was one of the commandments Christ gave is that, hey, they're going to know you. The world's going to know you from other people by your love for one another, your agape for one another, because it's just unheard of in the world to have that kind of love that would imitate what God did for us and that he gave his only begotten son, his in his logos mm-hmm. uh, made flesh to suffer and die and uh, was a final sacrifice for our sins. Yeah. In Psalm 115, one, it says, not unto us, Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name, give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. For thy True sake. They have very similar language, huh? Mm-hmm. Almost like the Apostle John had the same spirit, huh? Interesting. Same Psalms. The same Psalms. And this is exactly what Jesus said that um, that God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Grace be with you. John continues in verse 3, Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, from our Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah, the Son of the Father in truth and love. Hmm. There's there's, there's a few words there that we got to go over, right? So there's grace be with you, mercy, right? Mercy mm-hmm. be with you, and peace. And that's all of three of those are from God the Father and from our Savior, Yeshua, our Messiah. Mm-hmm. And then he says, Who the Messiah is? The Messiah is the Son of the Father in truth and in love. So with the grace, the grace is... um, Unmerited favor. Yeah, unmerited favor. You have unmerited favor that covers our sins. It covers our trespasses, right? Mm -hmm. Not just our debts. Right, Ms. Capone? Our trespasses. He who has ears, let him hear. (laughs) Grace covers... The sins, our sins, and then God's mercy, our miseries, because mm. we're miserable here on this prison planet, right? So a lot of times you'll hear people, especially in prison, you know, they do the, the jailhouse confessions, you know, the uh, conversions, mm. mm-hmm. and they're, they're calling out for God's mercy. 
Oh God, you make this go away, blah blah blah, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they haven't received the grace of their for their sins yet. So they're they're skipping the step of repentance. You, skip, you have to have repentance first. You have that grace that covers your sins. Then you can have the mercy that covers the miseries. And then when you have when first you do away with the guilt, right? And then your misery is relieved by mercy. Then the result of both those things is peace. Mm-hmm. That cool? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why it's third and older order because the peace comes after you're relieved of that sin guilt, and you get that mercy. You're relieved of that misery by God's mercy, and then you cast all your care on the Lord with thanksgiving. And then you can maintain that peace in your life. Mm-hmm. So, Amen. so there's a lot there in verse three. There's a there's a big you know Bible lesson right there in this one verse. Mm-hmm. Quite a bit. And so he says, "This is from the Father, and it's from the Lord, our Savior, right, our right. supreme authority, our Master, who's Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach, the Messiah." He's the son of the father. He's the begotten of the father. And he's he's the son of the father in truth and love. In truth and love. Mm -hmm. So that, that seems to be, in truth and love seems to be the element or the sphere, right, in which grace, mercy, and peace can take place. Grace, mercy, and peace can take place in truth and love. Amen? Amen. Okay. Verse 4, Ms. Kapow. Verse 4 says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking to, in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. So John's saying, I'm, I'm just so happy that I found... That the people of your congregation, of your church, <clears throat> the children you've produced, right? Mm-hmm. That you've nurtured and, and you've taught the doctrines correctly. I was so happy that I saw them walking in truth, right? And we talked about the truth. Mm-hmm. That's what John's talking about, walking in truth. What truth is that? They're walking just like we have received a commandment from the Father. And then he'll talk about what that commandment is. Mm-hmm. And we know that commandment is to love one another. Agape love. Right? It's mm-hmm. it's like, it's the, the, it's the fulfillment of the law. It doesn't abolish the law. It fulfills the law. Because if you, if you love God with all your heart, your soul, your body, your mean, your strength, everything that's in you, you just love God like, with everything that you have. If you love someone like that, you're going to do what they're asking you to do because you have this great love for them. And the second commandment is like it, right? Love your your brother as yourself or your neighbor as yourself. It's, it's, it's like that. It's, it outflows from that love of God. So if you're walking in the truth and walking in the commandment from the Father, you're doing you're doing that command that Christ has asked you to do, mm-hmm. and so John's happy about that because he sees these people doing that. He sees them doing that. Yeah, in Psalms eighty six eleven it says, "Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth, and unite my heart to fear thy name." I will walk in thy truth, mm-hmm. and even David, upon his dying death. He told Solomon, he goes, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies. And it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithsoever thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word, which he spoke concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to thy way, to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee 
said he, a man on the throne of Israel. So that is the standard for the truth, mm-hmm. is the Obedience. Father's commandments. Mm-hmm. I mean, right there. If you if you follow the commands, it all's going to be well. All's going to be well. And the opposite's true. If you don't, all is not well. There's, there's just not that gray area. There's not just a little bit. So it all goes back to the beginning of God's commands, his statutes. And we should all know what those are. We just go back to the Ten Commandments. We go to God's moral law. You know, we're not talking we're not talking the law of Moses or the um the Levitical law that's that's now impossible to keep. Mm-hmm. Um, not only because it doesn't exist, but because Christ has made a new covenant in his own blood. But God's moral law is God's moral law. That's why the new covenant was made, so that you can access that, right? You don't need the blood of bulls and goats anymore. You don't need that. You don't need the Levitical priesthood. You have a high priest. That's our, our, our savior. So the standard of the truth, when, when you're listening to um, these truthers, because everybody's a truther nowadays. Mm. <laughs> you notice everybody everybody has the word truth in their title or their YouTube name or podcast name, you know. Truth this, truth that. But, you know, I'm not saying they're wrong, but there's only one the truth. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not saying that they don't have truth, to, you know, in what they're talking about. But there's only one the truth. Right. And the standard is God's commandments. Mm-hmm. It's really that simple. You know, you don't really have to look look beyond that. Okay, verse five. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And it's also said in John thirteen thirty four, Jesus says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Amen. And that's exactly what he's talking about, Ms. Capel. That's exactly the commandment that he says, I don't give you a new one. I'm not saying anything new. I'm saying this this is the one we've had from the beginning, since the beginning of preaching the gospel of Messiah and telling people, especially the Jewish people in the first century, that the Messiah had come. Mm-hmm. See, because as as we all know, Israel was waiting for their promised Messiah. And like a lot of things that are in, um, you know, prophecy, a lot of things that are are written in the scrolls and things like that. Like Paul says, we see through a glass darkly. You know, we don't, you don't, you don't understand how that's going to work or how that's going to come about. You just hold on to those promises. Abraham didn't know how that was going to come about, but he's wandering the land like a stranger sojourning the land, looking for that city of promise, mm-hmm. that city of mercy and righteousness, not built with hands. He's, he's running around looking for that, but he never got to see that promise. But by faith, by faith, he did what God told him to do. And that was accredited to him mm-hmm. for righteousness. That's in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. And he's just one of them. There's a lot of faithers, that people did things that were un, that th- they didn't see yet. Mm-hmm. The promise wasn't given to them yet, and they did it by faith. That's right. And so, it's it's like it's like that where you know there's there's that commandment that Christ gives, and, it's, and even that's not a new commandment. He says you love one another. You love God with all your heart, all your mind, your soul, your body, and you and you show agape to one another. Um, yeah, and that's done by faith because there's a lot of times where your flesh wants to exert itself. Yeah. For instance, if you're offended by a brother or whatever, you know, you want to make sure that they know that you were right. You know what I mean? Oh gosh, yeah. And so it's um, love is a it's it's a it's a work. It is, especially in now days of age where uh, where people are able to comment and just say all kinds of stuff that they wouldn't say to your face, you know, by sitting behind a little computer screen, you know, and typing comments and 
you know, they would never say that to your face or, you know, or be able to stand up in a church service and say those kind of things. And sometimes it could get out of hand, right? Mm-hmm. And there's clearly a lack of agape. Yeah. Uh, for but I think the, the love that God's talking about is so much different than the world. I mean, you know, just um, one-on-one with one person, if that person offends you or something, you know, you, you want to um, make sure that they know that you're right. I mean, you're always exerting your own opinion, Yeah. you know, and even, and even with the word of God, you know, we have to walk in forgiveness all the time. Whereas in the world, you know, you always have that, well, yeah. you know. I'm not going to have anything more to do with that person or, you know, you, you, you curse them or, um, you know, you hold grudges and that's the way of the world where with God, it's, it's the love is different. And with the world, you know, you love people that are your, are similar to yourselves, you know, to have yeah. the same, um, mind view and whatnot. But as a Christian, it's, it's different. You're, you have to accept your brothers and sisters that are walking in truth. Yeah, that are walking in truth. And you're right, because even Christ says, you know, it's 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 easy to love. It's Corinthians know. 13. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, and it's, it's easy to love people who, you know, think the way you do or, you know, who are like, even the world does that, but a little harder to. See, but that's what I mean. It's the world, that's yeah. the way they that's not the way we should be walking. Mm-mm. No. No, no, no. So once again, in this uh, that particular verse here, if the lady were an individual and not a church, it would seem kind of weird. You know, that John says, and now I beseech thee, lady, and then he ends with, you know, that we love one another. Mm-hmm. As pure as that is, I don't think that would be something in the first century that would be, you know, Mm-mm. Uh, written so he's he's writing to a church and I'm um, 100% uh, convinced of that because uh, the other one it just wouldn't make sense and it it doesn't take you anywhere all right mm-hmm. so no new to commandment Christ already gave in that com- given that commandment there's a new uh, a new covenant written in his blood we come to the father through the sacrificial uh, death, and of course the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who came in the flesh. So, like I said, the Israelites had been looking for their Messiah all this time, didn't know quite how it's going to look, right? Just like you know, we can study prophecy and we don't quite know what the second coming is going to look like. We don't know when Christ comes in judgment. We we just you can read Revelation, read all, but you just don't quite know what it's going to look like. Um, when the Bible says that heaven and earth will be shaken. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, When it says the elements, when Peter says the elements will be melted like wax, you could read it and imagine all you want or listen to what people think it might be. But you really don't know what it's going to look like until it happens. That was the same thing with with the first century Israelites. They're expecting a Messiah, but they didn't know how it was going to look like. So when he does when he does come in the flesh like that. Uh, lowly riding on a donkey on a foal of a donkey uh, they don't they don't expect that it doesn't look like what they thought it would be mm-hmm. a ruler so this is what the gospel of christ is and these are the witnesses who then saw it and they go this is this is that spoken of the Sp- prophet joel you know this is uh, this this is messiah and messiah has come and he has come in the flesh and this is the the logos or the intelligence of God mm-hmm. made flesh. You understand? It is God. It's part of the Godhead. That's the Messiah. And um, and so when he comes, he gives these commands, and and that's that's what we're following. Mm-hmm. And then John says in verse seven, for many deceivers, not not how many, just a few couple many now this is maybe ad just say he wrote this in ad 90 right the temple's been destroyed for about 20 years um do we do verse six i uh oh yeah no oh maybe we didn't yeah and this is Sorry. love that we walk after his commandments this is the commandment that he that as he have heard from the beginning you should walk in it and that goes with um, 
John fourteen fifteen, where Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. There you go. So that's the one that we've heard from the beginning, mm-hmm. from the beginning of Christ's ministry that we walk in it. Mm-hmm. All right. It's, John's a big agape. I mean, and even me, when I read this, it's hard for me to get my head totally around what, what he's writing sometimes, you know? But yeah. there's a there's a big emphasis on that, and it's not just like it's not sloppy agape. You're just out there like a big yellow lab, you know, hugging on everybody. This is different. Yep. Uh, love is the fulfilling of the law. It fulfills that law that you couldn't do before. And in Romans thirteen ten, Paul wrote, "Love worketh no ill to his neighbor." Mm-hmm. Right, so if you if you love your neighbor, you don't devise anything. Why, why do you want to go hurt your neighbor? What's what's up with that? Mm-hmm. See, it doesn't work no ill to your neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Right. Uh, Paul puts it very simple: if you love, you're fulfilling the law. Mm-hmm. Because if you look like half half that law is about the neighbors, the other half is about God. That's right. You know, if you love your neighbor, you're not coveting what they have. Mm-hmm. You will not murder. You not commit adultery. You will not steal. You not uh, will not bear false witness or covet your neighbor's goods. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Because you have love for them. It's not because you're just told not to do that or you're going to get arrested. Yeah, you, there's love there. Mm-hmm. You, you go out of your way. You, you see their beach chair blown over the fence because of the wind. You go get it for them. They're not home. You know, take their trash barrel in, whatever, right? Because mm-hmm. you have that love. Love is the fulfilling of the law, and the fulfilling of the law is the sure test of love. So once again, this is the commandment. The commandment is love, in which all God's other commandments are summed up in, right? They all rest in that, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. They all do. Yeah. So, um, as he says, you heard that from the beginning. It manifests itself by keeping God's commandments. Yeah. All right. Verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. So it, it almost sounds like, you know, if you're not paying a lot of attention, it almost sounds like he just starts a new topic here. Like he's mm-hmm. writing about love, the commandment that you've heard from the beginning that we should stick with that. But And then he starts talking about deceivers and antichrist. But it's one and the same because if you, you're not recognizing, if someone's not recognizing that Messiah has already come, in the flat, they're they're still under uh, either the old law or an old system or a non-existent system, and they're not under the new covenant. Mm-hmm. Especially if they're preaching this stuff, you got to remember here in the first century, many 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 Israelites were converted and saw that uh, that Yeshua was in the flesh, was the Messiah. In fact, 3,000 were converted in one day on the, in the second chapter of Acts. There was a huge number that were converted, but not all. There were still Judaizers and still people that held to the old you know, laws. And once the temple was destroyed, they, uh, they tried to replace that stuff with um, education, basically. Mm. Kabbalah, <laughs> you, know, you get your Jewish mysticism and magic and all that stuff. Uh, so these 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 particular people, and even even today, um, the Orthodox Jews and people who really follow Judaism. Uh, I'm not talking Messianic Jews. I'm talking Messi- just Judaism. They're still waiting for their Messiah, mm-hmm. just like Islam's waiting for their you know uh, what's he called? I forgot. Metrius or Metrius. Yeah, they're waiting for their their uh, Messiah. They don't recognize that Messiah has already come. Mm-hmm. And if, it, if you don't recognize that he's already come, you're not only just like, well, you missed it. No, you're, you're, you're opposed to Christ. You're anti-Messiah. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying there's no gray area here, no gray area here. So, you know, if your church is having the Jewish rabbi come and 
teach you how to do cedar over Passover and all that stuff. He's not a Messianic Jew, just a Jewish rabbi. That guy's Antichrist because mm-hmm. he's still waiting for his Messiah. And this verse also harkens back to 1 John 4, 2, where he talks about the Antichrist. He says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof he have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. And if you go back to the Lord's teaching, um, just... For like Matthew 24 says, and Jesus says, um, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And then you go down to verse 24, where it says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And I like the verse in... Um, Luke 21, 8, where Jesus says, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. Mm -hmm. It really, that that is really his his main message. Mm -hmm. It's like everything leading up to this verse that's been about truth and love, the reason why he talked about truth and love manifesting itself in keeping God's commandments is for this verse. For many deceivers are entered into the world. So he lays the foundation about truth and love to tell you this. Just as truth and love go hand in hand, here's the warning about untruth about teachers of untruth. Now, obviously, you could say, if these teachers are untruth, they don't have agape, right? Mm -hmm. Because if they have agape, they wouldn't be anti-Christ or opposed to Christ and leading people to hell, right? That's right. Many deceivers have gone into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. You got to remember, too, there's a lot of Gnostic teachings, a lot of uh, doctrines of devils being mixed in with um, philosophies from Alexandria, Egypt, Gnosticism, that believed uh, or, you know, would say, well, Jesus came, the Messiah came, but he didn't have a real body. (laughs) He had a spirit Mm. body. That's why he was able to do all those miracles and do all that stuff. And when he was crucified on the cross, it wasn't a human body, it was a spirit body. You know, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, there's, there's all kinds of stuff like that. And John would say, no, he, he, he came in the flesh. He was a real human. He, he, he was born a real human. And uh, with divine blood, Satan had nothing in him. All right? Amen. Make a sense? Make a sense of me. Eight. Yes. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. That's basically he's saying take heed. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Look to yourselves as take heed. What? That you don't lose those things. You don't lose those things that you got, that that were ministered to you, but that you receive a full reward, right? Um, I don't think you can get just a partial reward. I think you either you either you either lose or you receive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you look to yourselves, take heed of this because of this widespread deception that are leading that 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 even back in his day have led many astray. Yeah, and, and even like, in Re- I'm sorry, and even in Revelation, you know, um, when the angel's talking to the church of Titeria, uh-huh. basically he was saying. Um, that you need to um, hold on, hold, hold on to what you have. But let me see what it says. Verse twenty five says, "But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come." Hold fast, mm-hmm. because there's many out there deceiving, and you touched on um, Matthew twenty four already. Mm-hmm. That Jesus said, uh, "Take heed that no man deceive you." Right? Yep. 
24.4. And then at 5, he said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Mm -hmm. See, many, right? Verse 24, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. Show great signs and wonders. See the very elect of possible. So it, it's a huge thing. And it was a huge thing 1,900 years ago. How, how much bigger it is today? You think this went away, Ms. Bell? Mm-mm. You think it got better? You know, as we learned, you know, about the Bible. You know what? There's less and less Antichrist out there. It's pretty good now. No, it's really hard to get them now. Mm-hmm. They've really learned how to sneak in. And plus, you don't have, uh, you don't have guys like um, the Apostle John around anymore. Mm-hmm. You just, you know, you, all you have is his writings, but you don't have him around anymore to. Yeah. But basically, in verse eight, though, he, he's telling them that, um, that to look to yourselves that you lose nothing that was a uh, rot so that you would receive your full reward. And even in Revelation, it says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So there's that, um, what John is saying too, is, is, is that you want to protect, guard the gospel that you already have so that you don't lose your reward. And, and that's a real good point because when you just read this, it says, but that we receive a full reward, it almost sounds like, well, if if we don't take heed to ourselves, right, on those doctrines, we may, we'll still get a reward, but it won't be the full one. Mm-hmm. That kind of s- stupidity. You know, well, as long as I'm in heaven sweeping the corner at school, I don't have to be, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Like like there's some gray area. But really, the, the oldest manuscripts here, the older manuscripts read that ye lose not, but that ye receive. Mm-hmm. There's a loss here. We lose not, we receive. It's not that we receive a full reward, but take heed that you lose not, mm-hmm. and that you receive your full reward. Yeah. You don't want to scrape by and lose, you know, have all your works burned in the fire yeah. while you um, very narrowly escape uh, damnation. Yeah. Yeah, water runs to the lowest point. Now, I don't know why anybody would would have that kind of mindset on purpose. You know? Yeah, because they like uh, the the world. Yeah. <laughs> Verse nine. Verse nine: Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. And it goes back to First John, who says, Whosoever denies the Father, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Yes, exactly. And this kind of explains what he just said in verse 8 about the loss. You know, not getting the full reward. Mm-hmm. It's explained. The not having God, that results from not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. Because you can't you can't be a Jewish rabbi, right? Or a new ager, or anybody else is oh, God this, God that. You ever meet these people? Mm-hmm. God showed God bless God God. Thank God for this. Thank God, right? Mm-hmm. But it's never Jesus. It's never Messiah. It's never Yahshua. But they just go directly to God. Well, you don't, because if you deny God, you, you deny Christ. You don't have God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because God and the Father, God the Father and God the Lord Jesus Christ, they are one. Yeah. It's the logos of God. It's his mm-hmm. begotten son. So you can't you can't uh, you can't just have God and deny the doctrine of Christ. But if you, but if you have Christ, you have both Christ and the Father. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, let's see here. That's what the loss is, right? mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Uh, let's go verse 10 then. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that bideth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Okay, and you combine 10 and 11 and that was good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Because yeah. they go, yeah, hand in hand. It, this is important here, what he's saying. If anybody coming to you that brings not this doctrine, what doctrine is he talking about? The doctrine that Christ came in the flesh. Mm-hmm. He's Messiah. Jesus is Messiah. And when he says come in the flesh, it's all that that entails. 
his incarnation, which is super important, right? Mm -hmm. That God incarnated as a man, that he, uh, he, he did, he did his teaching, he did his works, but that he suffered his suffering as a propitiation for our sins. Mm -hmm. And then he resurrected as the first fruits. He's the first one to do this. And he, now he sits at the right side of, of the father. Any, any denying of that aspect that that happened is antichrist. It's mm -hmm. antichrist. So if there's anybody who comes and they say, even if it's a teacher or a brother, they come. Mm -hmm. Any Anything. And they're, and they're going to come because we just read in, in Matthew there, many come, many say this, many do this. Yeah. When they come and as they're teaching you a worldly way, they're antichrist. See, because they're denying the work of Christ. In the yeah. flesh. Even the Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we, as we say before, say, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Any other gospel mm -hmm. than that was preached, any other gospel. That's right, because there's only one. Yeah. So it's it's really important. They're like, well, you know, I heard this guy. He, he didn't deny that Christ came in the flesh, so I think he's okay. He's just saying that, you know, Christians just smoke some dope and, uh, you know, open up. <laughs> right? Yeah. But you know what? I I used to wonder about the, the Mormon religion because they have the same lingo as we do. Mm -hmm. They believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in the Father. They believe in the Holy Ghost, you know? Yeah. And I always wondered, well, why is it considered a cult? But then I realized the definition they have of Jesus Christ, the Father, and the Holy Ghost is different than our definition yeah. of who Jesus Christ is, who the Father is, and who the Holy Ghost is. And that is what they're talking about, a different gospel. They may use the same lingo that we use, but their definition is incorrect. It's a different Christ, yes. It's a false Christ. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ is not the half-brother of Satan. No. And that is what they teach. Yeah. See? Any doctrine, anything that's different than what has been received is Antichrist. And here's, and here's the kicker to this, too, that John says, and Paul also says things very similar, receive him not into mm -hmm. your house. Don't let him in. Don't receive him. Because, oh, he's a good guy. He's done a lot of good works. And, like, and it says, and neither bid him Godspeed. In other words, don't even, don't even bless him with that. Don't even, you know, Godspeed, like, you know, good speed to you. Because the next verse for if you if you go Godspeed, God bless you, you know, you know, go on your way, you partake of his evil deeds. You partake as if if you're the one given the false doctrine. That's pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. so, is you have to separate yourself. Receive him not as separating. And not just separate, don't even bless him, don't even wish him well. Because if he's teaching an antichrist doctrine, right? If he's, if he's teaching the Antichrist doctrine like a prosperity teacher, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, I don't have to name them all. There's, there's so many of them. He's a prosperity teacher. And you go, well, you know, I wish him the best because they're still, they're still talking about Jesus Christ. You might as well just go ahead and sit under their teaching and their doctrine because now you participated in them. That's pretty heavy. Yeah. You've received them. And they're not just people from the outside, but they're people from the church. Mm -hmm. And even the Apostle Paul says, uh, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Yeah, amen. So basically he's saying that 
you need to come out from among them and be separate and touch not at the unclean thing and I will receive you. Because if you if you're wishing that person a blessing and Godspeed and good luck and what you're doing and hey, you know, blah blah blah. You identify with his evil deeds, you're partaking of his and having communion with his evil deeds by doing that. Mm-hmm. It's like as a saint, right? You can't have commun- communion with Antichrist at the same time you're having communion with Christ. Mm-mm. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, that's that's something that, yeah, you probably don't hear very often, but you, you do have to remove yourself. Yes. From the, from the false teacher. You, you can't. Once you hear something sideways, you got to go at. Mm-hmm. Because we have that problem all the time, you know. We'll be listening to somebody like, I like this guy. This is good, good teaching, good teaching. And then all of a sudden he'll say something goof, just like unbiblical. I know. Well, what do you do? Well, I like the rest of the stuff he says. I just don't agree with him on this. Mm. Mm. Got to separate. Verse 12. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. He's now ending his letter Mm -hmm. saying, um, I got a lot of stuff I'd like to tell to you, but I think it would be better if we just, you know, face to face. Yeah. And verse 13 in the very last verse. The children of thy elect... Sister. Sister, greet thee. Sorry, I couldn't read my... Yeah. The children of thy elect sister, greet thee. Amen. And here you go. It's a church. Um, thy, your elect, and a sister. So there's another church where he's at. Greet this elect lady and her children. And uh, so ends John's letter there. So what we take out of this is once again... The the command of love, love you one another. And if you love, that is the result of keeping God's commands. Mm -hmm. And then once he established that, then he says, there are many that, that are in the church, from the church, that are teaching another Jesus, another, another doctrine. Mm -hmm. And, that's not love because they're not keeping the commands of such separate and remove. All right. right. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's, that's the takeaway from that. And that's all I have for that. Miss Capel. Yes, me too. All right. Well, we will talk to you next week. God willing. Yeah. God, Lord willing. Ciao, baby. Ciao.